Okay, so now we would have 10 minutes of uh, like broad discussions on which can be on uh, any of the two talk questions or comments, or observations, whatever is on your mind. Um, so feel free to ask uh, anything or even just uh, uh, give some views that you might have. I, I actually have a, uh, a question uh, which is uh, related to both the talks and perhaps even uh, probably also to next one, <laughs> but I'll ask it uh, right now. And uh, so one one central uh, and so Chang you already discussed this. So one central central um, uh, uh, input of this uh, of this experiment is the the species pool, right? And uh, um, uh, my question is. For instance, also in the first uh, talk by Martina, which uh, part of the results uh, do you think is uh, independent of the species pool? So let's say that you repeat the same experiment with uh, a sample taken from a different environment, or you repeat the same experiment with combining multiple samples from multiple environments, so creating a much more diverse species pool. So how much do you think the species pool is important in limiting the diversity you see versus uh, no, it's uh, basically you are uh, you already have enough diversity and what you see is independent. Yes, that's a good question. Um, I would expect that uh, the effect of species pool is rather minor in this case because what we the, the community that we sort of uh, consider is it slows that assemble in a simple environment, which is glucose environment. So for those community that uh, the community members that pass the, the first filter of uh, being able to grow and coexist on glucose, then they already we already select for some subset of the of the uh, species from the, the the global species pool. But I don't. I think. I think the environment will play more important role in determining the not the, the richness, but also like the structures of the of the network. Seems the the, the coexistence in the pairs could be different if we change the environment. For instance, if you have a very rich environment which allows uh, diverse species to coexist, then I would expect that uh, these rich environments would also that the, the species to coexist in pairs more, more often than uh, the species pairs in a simple environment. So I, I think species pool relative to, to the environment is a minor sort of factor in determining the network structure and, and the richness. Maybe I can add something from my side. So for example, well, the species pool may be uh, yeah, I kind of agree with Chang Yu in the sense yeah. that uh, the species pool probably has a minor effect compared to the environment. Although, let's say in the ca in the case of uh, having like as Leonora was saying before, big molecules that need to be uh, digested, you need microbes, for example, that digest these mo these molecules, for example, to generate to sustain a community. But the other thing that, for example, um, if we think about for, uh, re repeating the experiment with other uh, pools of species, I think that uh, the structure, for example, with generalists and specialists is something that is quite uh, uh, common across environments. So there are uh, lots of studies that highlight that uh, uh, across communities, you can find generalists and specialists, and usually generalists are uh, very few compared to a lot of specialists. So for example, this aspect of at least my experiment, I think it would be conserved if I change, if I maybe change the pool of species. Maybe. <laughs> okay. If uh, nobody wants to add anything on this, Maybe I have a question, a question for Martina or for whoever wants to to say something about it. So in in your experiment, Martina, like your results suggest that, suggest that uh, cross feeding is the me the mechanism that uh, supports uh, high diversity. 
And also, like in another experiment, the one uh, of the group of Alvaro Sanchez from 2018, uh, the same. It suggests that it's cross-feeding that, uh, that maintains a high diversity. So can we somehow conclude that cross-feeding is the main or however most uh, common uh, uh, mechanism that supports uh, high diversity? Or is it also because um, the typical laboratory setting excludes other possible mechanisms like uh, uh, spatial heterogeneity or uh, predation that in other, in other settings could be instead common reasons? Well, I, I think that uh, it depends. So obviously in nature, you have all these things playing together, spatial heterogeneity, predation, uh, uh, warfare, uh, so microbes fight against each other, they produce antibiotics. So then there are phages that are thought to uh, contribute to diversity. So I would say that the, when you think about the natural settings, all these, uh, um, well, and this is the ecologist that speaks. So I think that all these, uh, all these processes are, uh, can be equally important. Obviously in the lab, you tend to try to isolate, uh, uh, let's say the effect of let's say you try to quantify the effect of one process so that you can, and keep, you keep constant all the others so that you can try to understand more what's going on with respect to the specific mechanism. And um, yeah, I believe that cross-feeding plays an important part and there is, there's still a lot to understand about it for sure. And um, yeah, so at least in our experiments, uh, it is probably what's going on. Although, for example, I'm not, I'm not filtering for phages. So to, to be fully honest, I don't know if there are phages that can do, that can change the dynamics. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I can add the last thing that is about, for example, environmental parameter variables like pH. So our people, um, other people in our group are studying variations in pH and uh, let's say, uh, the complex dynamics that can arise from variations in pH and also, and uh, so I think that this is another possible process that could contribute to, for example, change, temporal changes in diversity and interest in dynamics. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a question on the chat also from Marco that says, what is the typical variability of taxa found across biological replicates of these experiments using the same resources? So, so uh, uh, again for me. So uh, yeah, there is variability um, for sure. So uh, if so, to, so the in the experiment uh, I had uh, three replicates for each resource, and richness varies. The composition varies a bit, but more in the at the species level compared to the family level. So this is as a result that has been already shown. Uh, as you were mentioning in the paper, another paper by the Sanchez lab in 2018, where usually what you see is that family diversity, so the, there is convergence at the family level and less at the species level. So quantifying variation, well, I can tell you that variability among uh, um, communities supported by different resources is larger than the variability uh, between the replicates of the same resource. I don't know if I'm, maybe other people doing experiments maybe can add something about. Okay, I don't see other questions. Is um is there a can I, is there a little bit of time? I, I like to follow up to understand Jacopo's question a little bit more because I think it's an important question and maybe it will reappear later and, and it has a relation to this question of the bias also in the pool because we generally take the pool as, as given, but I think it, it, of course in the experiments it is, but I think maybe we can keep that question in the back of our minds. And Jacopo, are you asking basically if we increase the pool, uh, would we just see a proportional increase in the local diversity or is there a discontinu uh, a, uh, sort of an effect that is not 
that is not linear and that therefore as, I, as we if we were to increase the pool we will assemble a much richer diversity than expecting uh, yes so yes so my, my question was related to how much the size of the pool uh, the, the sort of size of diversity of the pool which is I mean a concept which is hard to quantify as it's not the of course the number of taxa but uh, sort of the size if we could measure have a measure of the diversity of the pool how that would uh, affect the, the diversity and the composition of the local community, right? And for yeah, me, it's yeah. not even obvious that uh, the, the relation should be positive, right? So let's say that you have like uh, one uh, super strong uh, generalist uh, who does, uh, which is the super bacteria, yeah. does some, everything perfectly, right? But it's very, very rare. So um, for some reason, which I have no idea. So. Of course, if that is in the pool, then you see like very low diversity, while if that is not in the pool, you have some sort of perfect assembly and you see higher diversity. Right. So, the, so, yeah. so I guess, uh, yes, I just gave the example of proportional or something, you know, faster as an uh, more nonlinear uh, as an example. But, but yeah, and, and it, I think as we move forward, perhaps I'm thinking about variation of traits. There is the question of how the, the, the forces that structure the local communities, if you were in a meta community context, which is where the pool comes from, how does it assemble the, the, the size of the, of the pool? So I think it's, it's a question to keep in the back of our minds because, because we will see a lot of malls where there is this given pool of variation, uh, but I think it's a very interesting question. Yeah, I totally agree. But it seems to me that, I mean, in some sense, the hope is that there is not a depend. I mean, that what, let's say, the of course the the, the taxonomic composition depends on the, the pool. But that other properties, let's say, the structure of the competitive motifs or the linear increase with the number of resources, is somehow robust. So we, are, we I, mean, I guess, this is the hope, right? That is not contingent of uh, what we have uh, in the pool. Um, but I thought the, sec the second talk uh, was arguing that a lot of what we see in the local yeah, yeah, yeah. experimental results is determined already yeah. by the biases in the pool, right? So uh, yeah. at least that was a, a conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, 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 yeah. I, I think perhaps, uh, uh, yeah, Sylvia, sorry. Right. No, no, I was not saying anything. Yeah, no, I, I didn't have any other comment. Uh, oh, okay, good, so. Okay, uh, sorry, is there time to make a little, another little comment here? Yeah, so, sure. um, so going back to the first comment that Mercedes made regarding, or things that, that appeared in this discussion regarding the appearance of motifs due to the assembly, um, the fact that a motif appears does not necessarily mean that it plays an important role in the coexistence. Um, namely, that it is important in any sense. So, uh, for example, you could have, I, I can imagine doing this in a simulation. I mean, an experiment, of course, it's, 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 uh, it would be harder, but you can imagine in a simulation, you do something, you, you see in your assembly process, something, correlations forming, which would be translate into certain motifs being uh, selected for, for example. You could take your simulation then and only put that correlation in your uh, community and ask, well, does that mean that I see more species that does that affect diversity? Does that affect a bunch of things? And often you can, and, and we did this uh, for, for certain uh, cases, things that you see obvious like these, uh, you know, selection for certain motifs have no effect on, for example, the final diversity. So the fact that something is there and selected for it does not mean that it has a functional importance in um, maintaining coexistence and so on. Okay, these are two different things. Yes, I fully agree with that. So I, why I think like the advantage of uh, looking at the competitive network because it's it's measuring the outcome of uh, of competition, right? Because 
the links of these networks are uh, outcome of uh, competition. So this is not dependent um, on the, what kind of ecological interactions or, or uh, what mechanisms are in play. We were just measuring the result. So it's basically it's a model-free sort of network could be generated from any kind of mechanisms. And um, I think what I, I would kind of emphasize of the, the work is that we we were lacking like first, because in, in other kinds of ecological networks, full webs or uh, mutualistic network, we have known that there are some of these pre, uh, like uh, occurring like all the time across different companies. And we have known that some of them have important functions, but some of them don't. And I think for this particular type of competitive network, we are we we are having just the first step of trying to know is there any commonness across community assembly in the same way that shows similar motif distribution. Then we can now now I'm trying to work on is that what kind of uh, meaning of like enrichment or under enrichment of uh, motifs mean in these communities. I think that's. I think it's exciting to to try to figure out what happens because what I don't have a clear explanation is like why we see transitive motifs, right? Because it could be in the end that there's no uh, functional meaning for this enrichment. We could it could just be a, a artifact of of a network assembly, or oh, sorry, the like community assembly. Or it could have a play a role. I don't know. And and I think one way we can we can test that is because it's by uh, from the more mechanistic model that we know. How micros behave, and we can from the mechanism try to build up how how the networks could be could be uh, affected depending on how we we uh, we we model the, the microbes. I think it's we we're just having the first step of trying to understand what happened for this type of uh, network. Yeah, but these are great uh, uh, comments for like trying to to this uh, disentangle the effect of the enrichment in the in the motifs. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, I think now it's a good moment for our 10 minutes break. So you will be split in breakout rooms where you can continue chatting if you want. And you should also be able to move from one breakout room to, to the other to find some people you would like to chat with. And see you back here in, in 10 minutes for the next session. <laughs>